Hey everyone, it's Shantae Moore, Certified Financial Educator, and I'm back with another video topic and I'm really excited to talk about this topic today. As you can see from the description of the video, I'm talking about financial planning for our babies. And I was inspired to do this video because I was drinking some water earlier from my favorite mug. It's a little mug with a mama bear and her three cubs. It was a beautiful gift that I received on Mother's Day earlier this year. And I was like, you know what? I, I need to talk more about saving money <laughs> for our kids. You know, I'm a mother of three little ones and every mother that I talk to, you know, we all want to do the best that we can for our children financially, right? Even grandparents, I work with a lot of grandparents. They wanna do the best that they can for their grandchildren as well. Um, especially if you're in a financial position to do so, oftentimes we just don't know what to do. So I wanted to do a video today to share three financial strategies that you could consider for um, establishing you know, some financial accounts for your children or your grandchildren and how not only will it, obviously if you're putting money away for your, your children or your grandchildren, that'll definitely benefit them, but ways that these things can benefit you as well as a parent or a grandparent. Um, I wish I wore a black shirt to hide my little microphone, but it doesn't matter as long as my audio is good. My first tip that I want to share is out of my favorite book. It's called How Money Works, Stop Being a Sucker. Meaning stop being a sucker when it comes to your money. Um, I love it. This is my new favorite book. If you continue to follow me, I will be talking about this book a lot in the future. I got a signed copy from the authors. I mean, it's so easy. My, 11, my soon to be 11 year old daughter, she's reading this and she's learning about money because this book is explains these concepts so easily but anyway I'll, I'll be sharing more about this book in the future but one concept that they talk about in the book is the million dollar baby and i was like oh my god i love this strategy imagine having a child and helping them to save one million dollars and trust me it doesn't take as much as you think it might take if you read statistics on being a parent and raising children in the u.s the average cost to pay for a child and you know taking care of them and their living expenses and everything from birth through age 18 that total cost is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so let's talk about a unique financial strategy tied to that particular statistics two hundred fifty thousand dollars that's a lot of money you know you don't think about that when you're spending money and buying food and paying rent and mortgage all the time but what if you took just one percent of that $250,000 and actually set it aside in an investment account for your baby while they're a baby and you just let that money invest and you don't do nothing else with it. Did you know that over time, if you establish a $2,500 investment for a newborn child, that by the time they turn 67, if that account was growing and investing at an average interest rate of 9%, that they would accumulate over $1 million again by the time that they turn 67. Now, this is just putting that money in one time and not doing anything else. You're just letting it go and ride the ups and downs of the market. And we know over time, the market will perform. So, I mean, obviously that's decades of letting that money grow, but imagine just making one smart the financial decision and your child when they get ready to retire they've already had a million dollars and you didn't have to do anything else for that but just let that investment grow and do its thing so i love that concept of the one million dollar baby i know that i will actually start talking a lot about if you're on my email list soon you'll be hearing me share messages about a million dollar baby trust because that's a strategy that you could use incorporate it into having a trust set up and establish to make sure that that money grows in the way that it should grow and then nobody can touch it so that again when they turn 67 or you know 65 whatever age it is that that money will be there for them so I love it again you that's an investment account um, it's not for everybody and you definitely want to make sure you work with a licensed financial professional who can handle investments to help you do with that I can help you if you would like um, but you know I just like to give simple numbers you know $2,500 let that money grow and it'll turn into over a million dollars by the time your child or grandchild is ready to retire. Why not? Why not give them that head start in life? I mean, there's a lot of people who are struggling to try to retire now and they have they have practically nothing. So I know 
you're watching my video, you don't want that to be you and you definitely don't want it to be your children or your grandchildren. So the next topic that I want to talk about a financial strategy um, is using a 529 account. So a 529 savings account, it's an investment account. Again, um, that's to be used, the money that grows and it's invested, it's invested in the stock market. Um, but that money as it grows and it's invested, that money can be pulled out and used later for paying for education costs. So back in 2017, um, our administration, uh, our president actually changed the tax laws. And one of the changes that he made was in regards to a 529 savings account. Previously, before then, a 529 could only be used to pay for college costs, for college tuition fees, you know, room and board, everything that you need to pay to go to college. But back in 2017, when that tax act had changed, it allowed for a 529 to also be used for kindergarten through high school to pay for private tuition costs as well. So you can establish a 529. Let's say your baby's a newborn and you know, you know, come kindergarten, first grade, you want to send them to a private school that you can actually establish that investment account while they're a baby. That money is growing and investing in the stock market and you can use it later when they go to school and pull that money out. Now, here are the benefits of a 529. So um, first of all, like I keep saying, it's an investment account. It will grow up and down and, you know, um, with the stock market. So there's potential for risk, just like with the million dollar investment account, the million dollar baby investment account, that money will be growing and investing in the stock market. Um, so always know that and you want to work with a financial advisor who can is, is properly licensed to handle investments. Um, but the benefits are many. <laughs> so first of all, um, as that money is growing and investing, you actually don't pay any taxes on the gains of that investment. I mean, just know when you're investing money and in, 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 when that account accumulates, you pay taxes at some point. Um, and in 529, as long as that money stays in there and is growing, investing while that money is growing, you don't pay, you don't pay taxes. So that's one thing to be, um, you know, it's a huge benefit that's available to you. It's a tax deferred account that does not, that you don't pay taxes while it's in there. Now, as long as you pull the money out for college, college costs, tuition, um, private, like I said, private school for kindergarten through 12th grade, you still don't pay any taxes. That's the huge benefit. Um, this is one of these tax advantageous accounts uh, while the money's growing and while the money is, you know, while you're pulling the money out. Now, a question that I get all the time is, well, Shante, um, what if I don't, what if my child doesn't go to college? Uh, because when you establish a 529 account, you actually have to name a beneficiary and the beneficiary would be intended, would be the child that this money is set up for and that the money is intended to use, you know, toward that particular child's, you know, education costs. But what if your child doesn't go to college, you know? what happens so here's one thing one feature that i really love about a 529 is that you can actually change the beneficiary at any time you can change it to any immediate family member so like for me i have three children let's say my oldest i have a 529 established for her and she doesn't go to college i can change it to her sister what if my middle child doesn't go to college and I can change it to their brother. What if my, what if none of my three children go to college and I can actually change it to, you know, a cousin, I could change it to, you know, another niece or nephew. I can actually even change it to myself. So you as a parent, you can open a 529 for yourself and you could be the beneficiary because, you know, some parents are going back to school too, right? So um, that's a really cool feature because if somebody doesn't go to college, I can change it to someone who will, who's in my family. Um, and another key benefit that I want to highlight um, is that money that you contribute, whether it's yourself, whether you contribute to your own children 529 plan or somebody else's kids 529 plan, you can actually deduct the money that you contributed into that 529 off your state income taxes. Now, you do want to look at your state's rules because sometimes the states might say, well, you need to have the 529 with our state because you can open a 529 with any state, but usually your resident state will allow you to deduct, you know, all or a portion or up to a certain limit of the contributions that you put into a 529. So let's say 
I have a 529 for my kids and I, you know, I contribute a thousand dollars to my best friend, her kids 529. I put a thousand dollars in my cousin's 529. I can deduct all those amounts up to a certain maximum off of my individual state tax return. So that's another huge benefit. So some parents or grandparents, if they're looking to, again, reduce their tax liability, they can actually contribute to, you know, a loved one's 529 plan and use that as a state uh, tax deduction. Now, talk to a, a tax person. I'm not a tax person. I don't give tax advice. But again, you want to know your state's um, tax requirements and rules and regulations. But um, I'm in the state of Illinois. I believe the contribution limit is $10,000. So I can deduct ten, up to $10,000 off of my state income tax return. And if you follow me, I talk a lot about taxes because a lot of people, they really don't consider taxes when it comes to their investment accounts. Now, the last tip that I want to share, the third tip is to consider having a cash value life insurance policy for your child. You know, all the time when we talk about life insurance, we don't think about, you know, getting our kids a life insurance policy, right? Like, I don't want to think of anything happening to my children, but I don't use life insurance for you know those purposes i actually take advantage of um uh, some newer up-to-date cash value life insurance policies in particular i like to use index universal life insurance policies because they have awesome benefits such as a, a really great a really great way to accumulate cash inside the policy um that i put into it over and above the actual cost of insurance so first and foremost this is not an investment you know, unlike the 529, unlike the million dollar baby investment account and the trust, a life insurance policy with the cash value feature is not an investment. It's life insurance first. So I'm paying for life insurance, whatever the death benefit is, I'm paying for that cost to insure my child. But again, this particular policy, Index Universal Life, IU Well, I really like it because any money that I put over and above that cost of insurance and whatever little fees there are in the policy, that money can actually grow and get stock market like returns. So IU Wells in particular, the way that their cash value accumulates is if they, they have different indexing and crediting strategies that follow the market. So when the market goes up, the cash value of my account goes up. And if the stock market goes up again, then my cash value of my account goes up again. But what if the market drops like it, like it did back in 2008, right? And it goes negative 40, 50%. I don't lose any money. My money is locked in because it's a life insurance policy. So whatever gains that I get in that account, you know, based on the stock market growth, it's locked in. So even if the market goes up and down, up and down, um, as long as I'm, I'm always locked in at the highest amount that my account has grown to. So I love, 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 love that feature because I have some downside protection. Now this is a long-term strategy, I would say 10, 15 years or longer. So for me, I have an IUL established for my children when they were young because I was like, okay, by the time they're 18 and you know, we'll see if they go to college, at least there'll be, you know, several thousands and thousands of dollars in this life insurance policy that they would be able to actually pull out and use for college. They can actually use it for anything. It doesn't and that's one thing I really like about it too is that it's not, you know, specifically for college. Yes, they can pull their money out for college but they can use it to pay for a wedding they can use it to you know start a business they can use it just to get a head start on, on a head start on life i mean that's what i want to do for my children i want to put them in a position financially that they're able to you know grow into adults and not have to worry and struggle financially like i did you know growing up i have a very 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 humble beginnings and i'm just blessed to where i am and blessed to be able to provide for my children um the way that i'm able to now so again those are strategies they're not for everybody I, I know that but if you are you know thinking outside the box and if you're wanting to establish some of these things for your children i would love to talk to you i'll leave all my contact information in the description box below um, again i love the babies and i love talking about how can we financially you know take care of our babies um, and the last thing i just wanted to say is that if you take the time to establish these accounts you know definitely get your friends and family involved in this process and you know 
saving money for our kids. I, when it comes to birthdays or like Christmas time, I tell my friends and family like, look, don't buy my kids any toys. They don't need any more toys because they look at it one time and then there there is old news the next day. Instead, you know, whatever money, if you're going to take 20, 30 dollars to buy a toy, I would rather you actually contribute to my kids 529 account. I would actually rather you contribute to their, you know, IUL so that that money can grow. That's, you know, that would be a better gift for my children to give them a financial gift versus some toy that will be practically useless the next day so it's an amazing these are amazing strategies again i would be happy to talk to anyone if you're interested in setting up any of these for your children um, and as always until next time i will talk to you guys later